Hey, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're going to talk about the power of 10. It's not really some magical formula or anything. We're just talking about actually raising 10 to the power of different things. So here are some examples. We have here 10 to the power of 2. And remember what when we raise something to a power, what it means is we're multiplying our base number, in this case 10, times itself that many times. So this is 10 times 10, which is 100. This one over here would be 10 times 10 times 10. See, we're multiplying the base times itself three times. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. 10 to the power of 4 is like saying 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10,000. Ooh, wow. And 10 to the power of 5 would be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, five times, which would be 100,000. Now, I don't know if you notice any patterns with this. Do you notice anything as we did that? We had said 10 to the power of 2 is 100. 10 to the power of 3, 1,000. 10 to the power of 4, 10,000. 10 to the power of 5, 100,000. Is there anything that you notice? For me personally, I notice that the number here, the power, is the number of zeros. 3, 3 zeros. 4, 4 zeros. 5, 5 zeros. All right. And if we went one step back, we would have 10 to the power of 1, which is equal to 10. 1, 1, 0. All right, so this is a pattern that you can notice if you look at that. How about negatives? I want to show you a couple with, with negatives. Remember, negative exponents, what that means is you put them on the denominator. So what this would mean is, there we go, 1 over 10 to the power of 2, or 1 over 10 to the power of 4. Let's make it pretty. All right, when we switch them to the denominator, or if we have a negative, we switch to the denominator and make it positive. So instead of having one, 10 to the power of negative 2, we'd have 1 over 10 squared, 10 to the power of 2. And so 10 to the power of 2 is 100. 10 to the power of 4 is 10,000. So 1 one hundredth, or 1 ten thousandth. Also written as, over here, 0 0.01 and 0 0.0001. And you'll notice patterns with that as well. But basically, when we're raising things to the power of 10, we could always do it this way and make fractions and multiply the divide 1 divided by 100 is 1 100th and solve them that way. Or we can just count. So let's just go ahead and count and see what happens. When we get 10 to the power of negative 6, that means 0 0.000001. And 10 to the power of 3 means 1,000, as we said before. So what happens when we're counting is this. Basically, you start with 1, 1 1.0. The decimal would be there or there, OK? When we start with 1, 1 1.0. Then we move the decimal, that number to the left for negatives or to the right for positives. So let's see if that works. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 10 to the power of negative 6, we move it to the left, 6. Start with 1, we move it to the left, 6 points. Perfect. With our positive number, 10 to the power of positive 3, you start with 1 and you move 1, 2, 3 places. We don't usually write a decimal at the end of 1,000, but it's implied that it could be 1,000.00. All right, so this is essentially what we can do. So instead of remembering all the rules for multiplying times 10, all you really need to do is know that you're moving the decimals to the left or to the right. And we just count, all right? So let's go ahead and, and take a look at a question that's very similar to that, only backwards. With this one, we're saying, what is 0 0.0001 as a power of 10? Well, what we would do is we would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 
we're moving the decimal six places, so it would be 10 to the power of six. But we know it's a really, really, really small number, and if we started with one, we're moving to the left. Really small number, moving to the left, it's going to be 10 to the power of negative six. Only we want to write it bigger, 10 to the power of negative six. 10 to the power of negative six. That's going to be our final answer. So if we're given a number and asked to write it as a power of 10, we kind of work in reverse, okay? And one other type of question that we will get that moves into um, actually what we'll be doing in the next lesson. And that's when you you take a number like 7.04 and you multiply it times 10 to the power of 4. Now we could, if we wanted to, write this out solving for exponents. 7.04 times 10 to the power of 4 we know is four zeros, one, two, three, four. And then we could solve it that way. Or we can count. Instead of starting with one, we would start out with 7.04, and we will move the decimal one, two, three, four places. So it's going to go there. We'll have to add in the zeros to kind of fill in the space. So our final answer for this would be 704, oops, 70,400. All right. Now, if you multiply 7 times 10,000, you'll get 70,000. So you get the same answer, 70,400. This way here to me is a little bit easier, just counting the number of times you move it, especially when you get into really, really big numbers. Also, when you get into really, really small numbers, it's easier for me to do it this way. So I'm going to show you an example of doing it this way here with negatives. Same exact principle. We could say 3.24 times 1 over 10,000. And then that would become 3.24 over 10,000. And then we would simplify it. Or we can do start with 3.24 and move our decimal 1, 2, 3, 4 places. Fill in those zeros, one, two, three, four. Our decimal is going to end up being right there. And our final answer would be 0 0.000324. All right, so this is our answer in what we call standard form. And this here, um, that is written as a power of 10. OK, again, you get the exact same answer if you solve this one, 3.24 divided by 10,000, you get 0 0.000324, all right? And if you prefer to do it in this method, that's fine, but it's a little bit easier to me just to count. Again, if it's a negative, you're counting to the left. If it's a positive, like in the previous question, you move the decimal to the right. And that's all there is to really know about solving with the powers of 10.